Welcome to Prerna Television Canada. We're very happy that we are continuing our regular weekly speaker series. And our um, this leadership speaker series, we have episode 33. And we're very happy that we are continuing our series. As you know, we are uh, continuing our series every Wednesday night at Mountain, Mountain Standard Time at 9 p.m. And Eastern Standard Time, it is 11 p.m. And we're continuing this one uh, for quite some time. And uh, we're happy that today is our 30, uh, 33 episode. And our today's topic is thought leadership. So we are waiting for our speaker. Uh, as we are waiting for our speaker, I'll share with you the screen. So I'm going to share with you uh, our series. As you know, our series is actually is in English, and uh, we speak Bengali. Uh, as we are waiting for our speaker, and we hope uh, he will be joining us soon. I will be sharing with you um, the Bengali portion of it. Uh, in order to save the time. Prerna Television Canada पक्को तो के आपना दर शागतम जाना चाहिए आज के आमदे आमदे लीडरशिप स्पीकर सीरीज़ एट तेत्रिश तो पर वो अम्रा कोई अम्रा वेट कर चाहिए आमदे जो स्पीकर रेगुलर जो चैनल अम्रा एक नो उन्हीं आशिन नहीं बट अम्रा आमदे बांग्ला जो सेशन टा एट अम्रा कुन शुरू करते जाते हैं अम्रा � এবং আমাদের ইস্টার্ন স্ট্যান্ডার্ড টাইম রাত 11টা আমরা কানাডা থেকে আলবার্টা এডমন্ডটন আলবার্টা কানাডা থেকে প্রোগ্রামটা আমরা করি আমরা খুব আনন্দিত আপনারা অনেকেই আমাদেরকে ফলো করছেন আজকে আমাদের বিষয়টা হচ্ছে থট লিডারশিপ আর আমরা খুব আনন্দিত যে আমরা আপনারা আমাদের সাথে আছেন আমরা সাধারণত যে টপিকটা শুরু করি একটি শুরু করি আমাদের একটা কোটেশন দিয়ে the greatest enemy of knowledge is not in ignorance, it is illusion of knowledge. Our knowledge is not in ignorance, it is illusion Dennis Crowley, if there is something you want to build, but tech isn't there yet, and just find the closest possible way to make it happen. So, Jodi Amade Konokis on the Shisti Korta Chai, in the Amade Kachikon Projectini, Amade Shop to Nikotoma Konokis of Kujibe Korta, Shamadan Pia Jaban, Ottawa, so Sheta Dennis Crowley in a make for the local election, Arak John Facebook at Jenny Potishata, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, if I'm there to build something for the long term, anything else is a distraction. So, I mean, distraction. So, leadership is the ability to build on thought process and implement those actions to bring in rich rewards for the society or business. আমাদের যে চিন্তা প্রক্রিয়া যে চিন্তা প্রক্রিয়া গঠন করাটা আর যে যে দক্ষতা এটাই লিডারশিপ এবং এই প্রক্রিয়াগুলো যে অ্যাকশনে বা কার্যে পরিপূর্ণ করে সমাজ এবং ব্যবসার উন্নয়নে কাজে লাগানোটাই হচ্ছে এই নেতৃত্বের উদ্দেশ্য 
এরপরে থট লিডার সম্পর্কে যে ব্যাখ্যা বা বলা আছে সেটা হচ্ছে যে থট লিডার ইজ এন ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল অর ফার্ম দ্যাট ইজ রেকগনাইজ অ্যাজ এন অথরিটি ইন এ স্পেশালাইজ ফিল্ড অ্যান্ড হুজ এক্সপার্টাইজ ইজ সট অ্যান্ড অফ এন্ড রিওয়ার্ডেড থট লিডার্স আর কমনলি আস টু শেয়ার দ্যার ইনসাইড উইথ এ রেলিভেন্ট অডিয়েন্স সো আমরা জানি এখানে থট লিডার বলতে যেটা বোঝাচ্ছে যে একটা ব্যক্তি অথবা একটা ফার্ম হতে পারে তো এটা সাধারণত যেটা অথরিটি বা হয় এবং ওই পার্টিকুলার যে ফিল্ডে এবং এইখানে আমরা জানি যে এই থট লিডার যারা যারা থাকে তাদেরকে তারা কিন্তু জ্ঞানের আধার মানে তাদের কাছে কিন্তু অনেক ইনসাইট বা অনেক গভীর বা বিষয়ে তারা শেয়ার করে এবং ও যারা অডিয়েন্স রয়েছে দর্শক রয়েছে বা যারা তাদেরকে ফলোয়ার রয়েছে তারা কিন্তু তাদের জন্য তাদের নির্দেশনা অপেক্ষায় থাকে থট লিডারের এখানে একটা বিরাট ভূমিকা রয়েছে বিজনেসের ক্ষেত্রেও আমরা জানি আমরা অনেক থট লিডার মার্কেটিং এর তারপর ম্যানেজমেন্টের বিভিন্ন বিষয়ের উপরে থট লিডার রয়েছে এবং এই থট লিডাররা আমাদেরকে দিক নির্দেশনা দেয় ব্যবসার ক্ষেত্রে হতে পারে রাজনীতির ক্ষেত্রে হতে পারে বিভিন্ন ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু থট লিডাররা এটা করে তো থট লিডাররা কিভাবে হাউ ইজ ইট কয়েন আমাদের অক্সফোর্ড ইংলিশ ডিকশনারিতে যেটা বলা আছে এটা আঠেরোশো সাতাশি সালের ডিসক্রিপশন হেনরি ওয়ার্ল্ড পেচার যেটা বলেছেন ওয়ান অফ দ্য গ্রেট থট লিডার্স ইন আমেরিকা যেটা বলা হয় The term is earlier, in 1874, Ralph Waldo Emerson was named as well as manifest the wizard power of thought leader. So, we have read this video. We have read the first thing about the thought leader. So, when we say thought leader, thought leader is the key. So, it offers a unique, insightful and groundbreaking perspective. তার মানে এই থট লিডার যারা হয় বা যারা চিন্তাশীল নেতৃত্ব নেতা বা নেতৃত্ব যারা প্রদান করে তারা কিন্তু একটা বিশেষায়িত বা একটা গম্ভীর বা কোনো বিষয়ে তারা কিন্তু এই দিক নির্দেশনা দেয় এবং রিকোয়ালিফাই ওল্ড নলেজ উইথ ডিফারেন্ট অ্যাট্রিবিউস তার মানে আমাদের অত পুরাতন কোনো জ্ঞানের সম্ভার আছে কিন্তু এটাকেই নতুনভাবে তারা উপস্থাপন করে অন্যভাবে অন্য পার্সপেকটিভে অন্য অ্যাট্রিবিউটস তারা এখানে দেয় আর একটা বিষয় হচ্ছে এখানে যে রি চ্যানেল ডোমেন স্পেসিফিক নলেজ কোনো একটা বিষয় যেমন আমরা যদি আইটির ক্ষেত্রে হয় বা কোনো একটা বিষয়ে কোনো স্পেসিফিক যদি নলেজ তারা এখানে এখানে দেয় আর একটা হচ্ছে রিকনস্ট্রাক্ট অ্যান্ড রি ইঞ্জিনিয়ার আইডিয়াস তারা কিন্তু যে নতুন নতুন যে আইডিয়া এটাকে নতুনভাবে গঠন করে রি ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং করে রিকনস্ট্রাক্ট করে ওপেন নিউ উইন্ডোজ অ্যান্ড ফিলোজফি তারা নতুন উইন্ডোজ এবং ফিলোজফি দর্শন তারা এখানে উপস্থাপন করে নাও আমাদের এখানে প্রশ্ন রয়েছে যে হাউ ডু বিল্ড লিডারশিপ নলেজ কিভাবে আমরা আমাদের নেতৃত্ব যে নলেজটা নলেজটা কিভাবে আমরা বিল্ড করতে পারি তো আমাদের এখানে নলেজে বিল্ড করার যে বিষয়টা হচ্ছে যে যে আমরা একাডেমিক্স তার মানে একাডেমিক যে নলেজ রয়েছে বা আমরা যারা জানি যে পাঠ্যদান বা যে থিওরিটিক্যাল যে নলেজ আমরা বিভিন্ন স্কুলে বা কলেজে বা আমার যে একাডেমিক যে বিষয় সেখান থেকে আমরা পেতে পারি প্র্যাকটিক্যাল এক্সপিরিয়েন্স থেকে ওইটা হতে পারে অথবা কম্বিনেশন মানে কিছু আমরা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল এক্সপিরিয়েন্স বা কিছু আমাদের একাডেমিক নলেজ অথবা ইনবর্ড অর ন্যাচারাল ট্রেন তো এইখানে প্রশ্নটা রাখা হয়েছে আসলে কিভাবে এই নেতৃত্ব নলেজটা বাড়ানো যায় তো এখানে অনেক এক্সাম্পল কেস স্টাডি বা যারা রিয়েল লাইফ এক্সাম্পল আমার মনে হয় অ্যাডভোকেট জিয়র রহমান যখন উনি শেয়ার করবেন ওনারা হয়তো অভিজ্ঞতা আরও শেয়ার করবেন ইংরেজিতে যখন প্রেজেন্টেশন করবেন আমি আজকে আমাদের বাংলা সেশনটা শুরু করেছি আপনাদের যেহেতু আমরা সময়ের দিকে রেখে তো টার্নিং আইডিয়াজ ইন্টু অ্যাকশন তো আমাদের পরে হচ্ছে যে কীভাবে আমাদের আইডিয়াটাকে কী অ্যাকশনে আমরা পরিবর্তন করতে পারি তো থট লিডার প্রভো কাজ টু থিঙ্ক ডিফারেন্টলি তার মানে আমরা যেভাবে চিন্তা করি বা যে প্রকারে চিন্তা করি বা যেভাবে চিন্তা করি সেই চিন্তাটাকে আমরা অন্যভাবে থট লিডারে কিন্তু উপস্থাপন করে বা সেটা তারা প্রবক করে বা সেটাকে অনুপ্রাণিত করে প্রবক করে ডিজাইন থিংস ডিফারেন্টলি তার মানে নতুনভাবে ডিজাইন করে থিংস এবং টেক অ্যাকশন ডিফারেন্টলি এবং তার নতুন অ্যাকশনটা তারা নেয় তো আলটিমেটলি আমাদের এখানে যে বিষয়টা ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে যে এখানে এখানে কিন্তু একটা প্লেয়ার্স মানে in thought leaders they are they are playing a very vital role ekhane to amader 
परिचित दे प्रमोट अपरचुनिटी इन एकेडेमिक फिल्ड हमारे एकेडेमिक फिल्डे नतून नतून सूझ सृष्टि कर प्रमोट कर ड्राइव निव नलेज नतून जो नलेज रही है ज्ञान रही है से सामने दिखे एगे नहीं जाए इनफ्लुएसिंग आदार्स टू टेक एक्शन अन्न के अनुप्राणित करें लीडर मान हम ता नेतृत्व दे सूतरा अन्न के टीम मेम्बर दे के एक साथ ही क्या करें हेल्प टू डिजाइन निव चिंता चिंता चिंताशील सत्यार समाज के परिवर्तन करना ना कि छोट बेपार एक हटात कर एक चिंता कि मानुष के एक एक्साइटेड कर लो झरे पड़ल आसले जो सत्यार अर्थे एक जो मानुष समाज मन कर चिंता चेतनार माध्यम समाज परिवर्तन होतीन परिवर्तन हो से थट लीडरशिप अत्यंत दरकारी जानी जो समाज विवर्तन प्रतिष्ठानिक विवर्तने एरक लोक था जर चिंता चेतनार माध्यम बड़ोधरण परिवर्तन आसे हमें तो देखे सामने जाज्जल्लमान स्टीव जब्स सामने बिल गेट्स जेफ बेजोस वाला नतून नतून चिंता नहीं आसे अर्थे समाज के लिए बड़े क्या कर तरह क्षेत्र अत्यंत गुरुत्वपूर्ण बेपारेवर्तन साधित है छोटो छोटो इश्यू नहीं जख जरा क्या करे तो सामान्य एक परिवर्तने आचर दे क्योंकिवर्तन क्षणस्थायी है तो सार्विक भाव दृष्टिकोण के देखी क्षणस्थायी चिंताधार बहरे उठे जदि को निजे के व्यापृत कर समाज परिवर्तन अथवा व्यवसा प्रतिष्ठान परिवर्तन डाक दे दृष्टि आरोप कर मनोनिवेश
আমাদের এই সিরিজের অংশ হিসেবে আমরা প্রত্যেক বুধবার আমরা ক্যানাডা এডমন্টন আলবার্টা ক্যানাডা থেকে আমরা এটা সম্প্রচার করি কিন্তু আমাদের সাথে প্রথম থেকে আমাদের যে আমাদের সহযোগী বা আমাদের যিনি ট্রেইনার উনি অ্যাডভোকেট জিয়াউর রহমান সিইও আইআইটিএম এবং অ্যাডজাঙ্ক ফ্যাকাল্টি অফ আইইউবি উনি আমাদের প্রথম থেকে আমাদের ট্রেইনার হিসেবে আমাদের এখানে এই এই কোলাবরেটিভ যে এফোর্ট আমরা করছি লিডারশিপে উনি আমাদের সাথে আছেন তো আমি ওনাকে বিশেষ করে বিশেষভাবে ধন্যবাদ দিতে চাই আজকে আমাদের আমাদের গ্লোবাল একাডেমি অফ হলিস্টিক লিডারশিপ অ্যান্ড কোচিং এবং প্রেরণা টেলিভিশনের পক্ষ থেকে আমরা আমাদের এই সেশনটা আমরা আমরা করছি এবং আমরা আমাদের বাংলাদেশ টাইমে আমরা এই সময়টা হচ্ছে সকাল দশটা বৃহস্পতিবারে এবং ইন্ডিয়ান টাইম হচ্ছে সকাল সাড়ে নটা আমরা বিশ্বের বিভিন্ন জায়গায় আমার বাংলা ভাষাভাষী যে ভাই বোনেরা রয়েছে তাদের সুবিধার্থে আমরা বাংলা ও বিষয়টাকে বলি যদিও বা বিষয়টা আমরা ইংরেজিতে অনেকেই যারা পোস্ট গ্র্যাজুয়েট স্টুডেন্টস অথবা যারা ব্যবসা বিভিন্ন করে অনেকেই যারা বুঝেন কিন্তু অনেক অনেকের ক্ষেত্রে সুবিধার জন্য আমরা বাংলাও বিষয়টা আলোচনা করি আমরা বিশ্বাস করি যে আমাদের এই প্যান্ডেমিকের সময় ক্রাইসিসে আমাদের লিডারশিপ স্কিলটা আমাদের গঠন করা দরকার রয়েছে যাতে আমরা বিজনেসে এবং ব্যক্তি জীবনে আমরা সাকসেস সাকসেসফুল হতে পারি এবং আমরা যাতে আমাদের স্কিল ডেভেলপ করতে পারি এবং আমরা আমন্ত্রণ জানাতে চাই আপনারা আমাদের সাথে থাকার জন্য আমাদের যারা ওয়েবিনিয়ারে যারা সরাসরি যুক্ত হবেন এবং আমাদের এখানে আমাদের এখানে আমাদের সাথে সরাসরি পার্টিসিপেট করবেন এবং আমরা আমাদের যে গ্লোবাল একাডেমি পলিসি লিডারশিপের পক্ষ থেকে আপনাদেরকে স্বাগতম জানাই আমাদের সেশনে থাকার জন্য আমরা আশা করবো আপনাদের যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে আমরা আমাদের সোশ্যাল মিডিয়া অথবা ইমেলের মাধ্যমে আমাদেরকে করবেন আমি এখন আহ্বান জানাতে চাই অ্যাডভোকেট জিয়াউর রহমান তার প্রেজেন্টেশন করার জন্য আমি উনি ওনার স্লাইড আপনি আপনার স্লাইড শেয়ার করতে পারেন এবং আপনি আপনার প্রেজেন্টেশন করতে পারেন আর বিফোর ডুইং দ্যাট আই উড লাইক টু ওয়েলকাম অ্যাগেন ফ্রন বি হ্যাভ অফ প্রেরণা টেলিভিশন ক্যানাডা অ্যান্ড and global academy of holistic leadership we are very happy our we are continuing our uh, leadership speaker series and today is our 33rd uh, 33 episode and we we are very happy our regular trainer and speaker advocate jia rahman uh, is with us and he is the ceo of iitm and he, he is also advocate of um, is advocate and also uh, adjunct faculty of iub and we are very glad the particular reason uh, glad that we are conducting this session and we believe that during this uh, crisis of this pandemic we want to build our skill and uh, especially the leadership skill because as each and every individual need to develop their skill plus the organization also need develop their leadership skill uh, at every level like not only like say uh, like manager or supervisor all level the leadership skill skill has to be developed that's why we are very passionate about uh, conducting this uh, speaker series and we we have conducted uh, like the today's our the 33 episode so we have conducted a lot of series and today our topic is thought leadership and we are very glad that advocate jia rahman will be presenting um, us uh, this session you can share your screen i can see your screen I just see all those files. Okay. You can share your screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, can, you can all right, fantastic. Fantastic. Can I start? Uh, you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Edward Probe Mondo, we just heard the Bengali version of our presentation. Uh, I am responsible for the English version. I also add my thoughts to the Bengali version as well. So today's topic is thought leadership. Uh, this is our 33rd series. Uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, living in Canada and rest of the world in Dhaka and beyond. So today's topic was thought leadership. So I normally start off with uh, a quotation or two. So the first quotation is by Stephen Hawkins. He is one of the greatest uh, scientists who, who left this world uh, very recently. Um, 
the quote, quote says, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is the illusion of knowledge. Extremely well said a quote. Um, normally, the way we think at times is that uh, we know it all, but actually we really don't know it all. We feign our knowledge, but in reality, we might be far away from knowledge. So as a human being, as a leader, if you are suffering from some kind of uh, uh, ego, egotic, egotistical trip in your mind, in your head, that I have more knowledge than others, or I, need, I don't need to uh, dig deep down in this subject matter, then sometimes you might be uh, actually uh, doing extreme disservice to you and the people around you. <clears throat> So that, it, it, that is why he has connected the, this idea with illusion. Uh, so if you have this feeling at times, you are not truly engaging in designing the future of yourself and the people around you. Uh, this, is, this is not sensible. So the whole idea for a leader is to ensure that you don't suffer from any kind of illusion. You see what truly is needed and you develop your knowledge and skills accordingly. And then only uh, you're stepping in the right shoes and in the right direction, and you're transforming yourself as a leader. And leaders truly need knowledge as they go along. Um, you don't have to have all the knowledge in the world to be a leader, but you should have the capacity to absorb knowledge wherever you can find it, and then apply the knowledge in your life. So this is in relation to today's topic. The next quote is by the next quote is by Dennis Crowley. If there is something you want to build, but the tech isn't there yet, just find the just find the closest possible. If there is something you want to build, but the tech isn't there yet, just find the closest possible way to make it happen. Dennis Crowley. So what this says is that if if there is no technology at hand, but you have a particular wisdom in your head, you have particular knowledge in your head, then you can actually make it happen. You can actually work through some of the obstacles and get to where you really truly want yourself to be. So the idea behind this statement is that if you have a will, you have a way. So as a leader, as a thought leader, you will be sharing ideas with people and people will res respond to your ideas. If they don't understand your ideas properly, you need to repackage your thoughts, you need to reposition your ideas, and then try to get them to be convinced with your thought process, and then move on to doing something, which is the next best alternative. Because once you throw out an idea, once you bring out an idea, and if you say that this is an idea that I want to work uh, work out and everyone in this forum or in this audience uh, please support this idea and let us deliver something unique then you have actually made a public statement and if you don't uh, back up your public statement by action then people will question your leadership people might think that your your strength of mind is frail and you're not engaging with the true spirit of delivering something proper with regards to your words uh, and connecting with your actions. So this is an interesting quote uh, worth remembering. Next one is, I'm here to build something for the long term. Anything else is a distraction by Mark Zuckerberg. This is truly a great statement because you know, Mark Zuckerberg is one of the uh, most renowned business tycoon of this century uh, at the very tender age of He's fairly young as a person, and yet uh, this product that she has come up with, Facebook, is used by more than a billion people on a daily basis. So what more can you ask for uh, when you're in business? He is really a leader in his own, in, in his own capacity. And uh, what he's suggesting is that, is this, that, if you want to truly deliver something appropriate, don't be confused by distraction. 
because distractions are side roads in your life which may take you in different directions but while you may not even achieve your target of going to your final destination of something remarkable you got distracted and based on your distraction you moved in different directions and at the end of your life or at the end of a certain period you realize that you have not achieved what you had initially planned for this happens to every one of us even the best of us goes to this miserable condition at times realizing that you have treaded a path which was not truly a path which you should have um, walked uh, you should have gone in a different direction but you have already made a lot of uh, effort a lot of investment you have put in your own energy sometimes money effort you have tried to convince others to come along with you in a particular path whereas that particular path was actually a distraction and you really didn't see the the light at the end of the tunnel and so you thought that the tunnel was not there but in reality if you had pushed yourself hard if you had worked with great energy and effort then you would have gone into that tunnel and you have actually uh, un uh you could have actually seen much larger reward in your life so this is something that we have to consider on a regular basis at the back of your mind so i normally have a quotation uh today's quotation on leadership is the ability to build on your thought process and implement those into actions to bring in rich rewards for society or business so basically in this definition we are suggesting that leadership is to build your thought process and then implement your thought process into the into reality that means if you are thinking of something truly remarkable but if there is no action that follows through then you are truly not a leader you might be an armchair general you have coined some ideas uh, you have shared some ideas but you are not putting your effort to see those ideas actually turn into reality uh, sometimes thought leaders don't put ideas into reality that is okay because some thought leaders categorically speak of the idea that we are going to be sharing ideas and everyone else will take our ideas and run that's a different mindset that's a different philosophy and that is okay because that thought leader has clearly articulated that we are going to create new knowledge and then others will follow through a scientist for example may not implement his or her work on the ground the scientist may come up with some theories and create some uh, wonderful construct and then potential product but the scientist may not uh, go and do commercialization of his or her product he or she may only do a test product uh, to show the world that it works others may actually follow through so you cannot blame the scientist that you you are not successful in that context so sometimes a thought leader will actually hold on to certain constructs certain philosophy wisdom and then let others roll out the next part of that wisdom into the ground reality but at certain times if you are claiming to be someone delivering the results and then not actually engage yourself in the spirit of working to create that opportunity for the rest of the world then you will be questionable a person you will not be considered a thought leader in that sense especially when you are claiming that you are going to deliver what you have already spoken earlier so that's very important so this is true in business it's true in society politics etc so we need to develop our thought leadership capacity and at times engage in the spirit of developing and implementing this thoughts into reality and at certain times only offering the thoughts for others to follow through moving to the next slide um here is a more technical definition of a thought leader so who is a thought leader actually thought leaders are someone who are selling an idea basically uh selling a construct so here is a 
technical definition, a thought leader is an individual or a firm that is recognized as an authority in a specialized field and whose expertise is thought, sought and often rewarded. Thought leaders are commonly asked to share their insights with relevant audience. So basically, a thought leader works in a specialized area. He or she creates specialized knowledge and he or she is actually answering some critical questions in society uh, for which people are maybe grappling for that knowledge, but they have not been able to get the proper idea. The thought leader actually makes it simpler for the greater audience to understand the process, understand the problem and find a resolution, find a solution to that issue. It might be a existing problem or it might be something uh, which due to societal changes have come up and somebody's input is needed in it in an intellectual and a technical way. So I saw a, a knowledgeable person is sought uh, in getting those ideas. Uh, a knowledgeable person is asked about or sometimes a knowledgeable person volunteers to come up with this new perspective that the society can take and move on. So this is also true in, rela in relation to new processes. For example, if you are in the digital IT field and uh, there are many software products, many software out there, but if you come up with some kind of, a, some kind of new channel to deliver new knowledge using existing software framework, or creating a new framework, then you could be considered a thought leader in the IT field. Similarly, if you are designing a new supply chain methodology or some altered viewpoint with regards to certain marketing of a certain product or service, and that seems to add value to society, then you could be a thought leader. You could be a political or social thought leader. For example, um, uh, if you're looking at Dr. Mohammad Yunus of Bangladesh, the Nobel laureate, he's a thought leader because he came up with a new idea of social business. Uh, previously, people may have done something similar to it, but they, they properly did not execute it in a global context. But our Nobel laureate, Dr. Mohammad Yunus, was quick and smart, and he packaged the entire idea and created his own construct of doing business while serving humanity. So this is a construct which he actually coined. So this is an important idea and area for all thought leaders. Thought leaders are actually someone who are creating the new enterprise or new construct in society that is applicable and meaningful and adding value to society. So they are normally asked to share their insight to a greater, larger audience. And every thought leader, if his or her thought is taken by society as some kind of value, takes the enterprise or takes the society or takes certain idea to the next level. So very, very important an issue for a thought leader. Thought leaders are essential for society. So as a, as a leader, a part of you should also be considering that you need to come up with new ideas as well. Not all leaders need to come up with new ideas. Some leaders are very good in implementing uh, certain actions which have been designed by someone else, but he or she is extremely equipped, managerially equipped to implement those ideas into, into reality. There is nothing wrong with that. And certain leaders have a blend of intuitive knowledge that he or she packages and creates new understanding in the business process, in the market, in the engagement or in the work dynamics in which he or she is involved, and then roll out the ideas into action. And they turn out to be normally uh, very influential leaders in society. So this thought leader is not just into business, thought leaders can be in society, in, in political arena, etc. So moving forward, 
So how was it going? I just added a slide on this, uh, just a little bit of history. Uh, the Oxford English Dictionary uh, gives it as its first citation for the phrase as 1987 description of Henry Ward Beecher as one of the greatest thought leaders in America. So in other words, uh, the depictal, the portrayal of Henry Ward Beecher was connected with this idea as one of the great thought leaders in America, somebody who is uh, coming up with new ideas and vision for society. So the word was coined first as per Oxford English Dictionary in 1887. The term had earlier emerged uh, in a book uh, the, by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was set to manifest the wizard power of thought leadership. And this is the source from Wikipedia. So what I'm trying to address here is that this is term is not a construct of the last 10, 20 years uh, where knowledge has really catapulted in society. But this idea of thought leadership has been sticking to the American genre, the history of America and the global world right from 1886 or 1887, 1876 or 1887. So society had been thinking of new knowledge Society had been creating new perspective, new ideas, and these are all part of the thought leadership process. So this is not a this is not a fad. This is truly something which has a unique perspective and value in society. However, certain cynics talk about thought leadership being a uh, being a fad. They think that it it's of this term or uh, this. This idea of thought leadership is uh, connected with ego, egotistical perspective, and the logic of thought leadership should not be uh, actually uh, promoted. This is by some cynics who are against the uh, notion of thought leadership. But at the same token, there are many people who believe that it is through thought leadership process and thought leadership engagement that society and the world evolves and moves ahead. I tend to uh, connect with this uh, community who are thinking that thought leadership can actually add value to society. Moving to the next slide. What does a thought leader do actually? A thought leader brings in unique, insightful, groundbreaking perspective. These are different ideas, different notions, diff different perspectives that adds a new dimension, adds a new flavor to society. He or she requalifies old knowledge. Sometimes old knowledge uh, cannot deliver the right output as it has been placed. But if you take the old knowledge, break it down into manageable and meaningful pieces, and then reconstruct a new perspective with new different attributes, then it might turn out to be something of value for society. And that's when uh, things can uh, mean uh, more, it can actually bring more reward for, for the organization or society. Uh, in this regard, I might, I want to ex give an example. For example, um, in your work environment, you have noticed all throughout your life that, that there are certain things which sit idle, but somebody comes in and sees that Thing, sitting idle and makes a makes something out of it and creates some value for it and then you realize that why didn't I think about it why did why did he have to think about this and then he created something uh, meaningful out of that system or out of that equipment that has been sitting idle so a thought leader actually looks at things differently and re-engages the knowledge to create something different and valued he or she channels domain-specific knowledge. We have knowledge in particular domain. So a thought leader is perhaps having more knowledge, uh, more crystal clear knowledge, more clear vision to create something unique for society. He or she reconstructs, re-engineers ideas, which is connected to the previous four. Somebody coming up with uh, repackaging old ideas 
and making a meeting out of those ideas and deploying those ideas into something constructive. So a thought leader is a valued person who adds to, to this new knowledge and the new knowledge is uh, creating new value to society. And obviously at the end, your thought leaders are someone who's tinkering with new knowledge. Therefore, he or she builds new knowledge, creates new knowledge, invites others to connect with him or her, and in, in uh, totality brings a reasonable output for society. And sometimes thought leaders are bringing in new philosophy in the world. We just talked about um, the philosophy of um, Dr. Mahmoud Yunus. There have been many other philosophers who have talked about uh, different ideas and different constructs which have made a impact in society. If you look at, uh, let's say, Marxist philosophy, if you look at uh, Freudian philosophy, if you look at Friedman philosophy, these are different constructs, different set of philosophy uh, based on which the whole idea of certain economics stands. And uh, for example, if you're looking at the uh, uh, Friedman philosophy, you're looking at the capital, uh, the Western capital economy. If you look at, at Marxist philosophy, you're looking at the uh, communism, socialism, um, etc. Uh, that has been developed in the Eastern Europe and Soviet Union and rest of the world. Uh, Soviet Union mean Russia now. So moving forward, uh, a thought leader is someone who is championing a new perspective in society. And a champion builds enterprises, a champion builds new communities, new societies, even new nations. Moving forward, how do you build thought leadership knowledge? How do you build it? That's the question. Um, or do you consider it an academic ex exercise only? Is it, a, is it built through practical engagement and first pr practical learning? Or is it a combination of academic and practical perspective? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves in our understanding of thought leadership, uh, in the process of building thought leadership in your enterprise or in your society or in your country. So, or is it something that is inborn, right? It's a natural trait. For example, we say that uh, leadership is partly natural, partly learned. So similarly, the thought leadership, does it fall into e any of this basket exclusively or is it a combination or is it something which you come up with uh, as, you, as you grew up as a human being, mostly instinctive and intuitive and perhaps given by uh, your uh, alma mater, your creator. So we have to ask ourselves these questions on a regular basis. I think it's probably a combination and partly a natural trait, but if you are pushing yourself into finding new knowledge, if you have the mindset as a leader, as a true leader, then you can create a new spirit, a new uh, culture within your organization. We have talked about organizational culture in previous sessions. So if you can inculcate the spirit of new learning within your enterprise, and you are part of that new learning process, and you are you push yourself to learn new ideas, new thoughts, that you want to unroll and enforce in your enterprise, then uh, this becomes a culture within your organization. And that has a meaningful impact in the people with whom you work. And all the new ideas that you are bringing in uh, may be debated within your community, but people will take this perspective as something positive. Whereas if there might be certain culture where Bringing a new idea might be very tedious, very difficult, very uh, hard to uh, convince. So it all depends on which community you are in, which type of social engagement you have developed over the years, and how people have responded. If you can change that process, if you can bring in those transformation in your thought processes that uh, new changes are welcome, 
new changes are needed and new changes can create meaningful enterprises, can create meaningful value to society, then um, building your thought leadership would be easier in the context of uh, in the context of your society and in the context of harmony within your enterprise. Um, this is something interesting that you have to notice that every time you're coming up with a new construct that you want to enforce within your enterprise, there is a, there is a certain level of imbalance that takes place. So some people do not want to be imbalanced. You might ask, why do we need the imbalance? We were, we were doing things as we used to do and we were happy. Why do, you, why do we need to introduce this new change? So the new change will bring in a period of imbalance. There will be a period of maybe a little bit of distrust whether this process will work or not. But as a thought leader, as a champion, and as a true leader, having a proper vision at the end of your uh, tunnel, you will have to enforce and you will have to push your team in that direction. Otherwise, your ideas will not come into fruition and it will never happen. For example, uh, in, the, in the context of the great war of liberation in Bangladesh, had uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman not a, seen the spirit of the emancipation of the people of Bangladesh, then the entire war of liberation and such level of commitment by human beings, even at the cost of their lives and the dislodgement of family, people get getting all, you know, totally uh, killed and raped and everything, this entire country came, up, came about, Bangladesh we're talking about. So if the thought leader, in this case, Bangabandhu and his cohorts did not see the outcome, the potential bright future, people would not have come behind him or the people who had championed this process of the great war of liberation, people who had shown the spirit that yes, the people of Bangladesh need to come up uh, and have an independent country. Uh, so this is a very important um, philosophy that a thought leader holds and passionately and passionately uh, tries to enjoin others, tries to connect others. And when the people who are with you are connected to your vision, then as a thought leader, you are successful you are someone who has been able to pull the audience in your direction. It's a very large task. Even if you're thinking of new products and service in your organization, if you're thinking of related diversification in your business, for example, if you're doing a current business, uh, which is not doing well, and you, you, you tend to think, and you are fairly convinced that come two years, this particular business is not going to survive or there has to be tremendous level of change within the business in order for the business to actually survive. So there has to be an element of transformation within this business. You can see it, but others are not seeing. Others are still going, going about as there would be no change in the business environment in the next two years, but you have been critically appraising the situation and you know that this business is not going to survive the way you are doing your business. So as a thought leader, you have to create a particular construct, a particular mindset that you have to engage others with so that they all realize that the future is bleak and something definitely different has to be introduced in order to survive in this business environment. So as a thought leader, you have to come up with new construct, new philosophy, even you have to get your people to come to this conclusion that maybe we take a loss and exit from this business and push ourselves into something different using the knowledge that we have acquired over the years in this particular business. This is a tectonic shift as a leader. You are making a large shift from your status quo. So a thought leader is always challenging the status quo. And based on this challenge, he or she is evolving the new organizational dynamic.
So I think uh, it's so vital for a thought leader. It's so vital for a thought leader to realize uh, that he or she has a very powerful, significant impact and consequence to what he is suggesting or she is suggesting in the marketplace. So he or she better be right. Otherwise, uh, things will oscillate in a very uh, difficult uh, process, in a very difficult way. The journey will be tumultuous. So we don't want um, any organization to go through this process, but we also need the dynamic engagement of a thought leader. And every leader should have a certain period of self-inquiry and a period of self-learning so that he or she becomes a better thought leader in society, in the business in which he or she is engaged in. So moving forward, uh, I would suggest that we need to push ourselves in the spirit of learning, relearning, unlearning, and again, relearning. As we live in a very complex business environment, as you know, uh, due to the coronavirus and pandemic, a lot of businesses are, have closed. A lot of businesses had to evolve. Uh, people had to evolve as well. For example, uh, we had to evolve. I had never done an international uh, digital uh, online program previously. I have done, but not in the sense of an academic program where, where I'm sitting in Bangladesh and my audience is listening from the rest of the world. So this is a unique change in my own perspective that is can be slightly connected with a new altered mindset. So as a thought leader, if I want to consider myself a thought leader, I had to evolve my own process. So as a leader, you have to evolve your own processes. You can't be sticky to your old ideas all the time. Sometimes old ideas are great. So we know the term uh, uh, old is gold. That's true. But sometimes old is not gold. Sometimes old is rusted and you need to eject. So moving to the next one. Turning ideas into action. Thought leaders are absolutely working towards a new future. They are blending new knowledge with old knowledge and co-creating or collaborating with others to create something unique. Thought leaders sometimes don't go into the creation process himself or herself, but allows the society to move on and create something different. So thought leaders provoke us to think differently. They, they give the tools and the wherewithals through which we tend to think differently. We have to build a new enterprise uh, based on certain principles and ideas uh, given by scholars, thought leaders, uh, industri industry uh, think tanks, we come up with new uh, business ideas, new business processes, etc., societal processes, which adds value to society. Uh, thought leaders design things differently, absolutely. They think differently, therefore, the design that they promote are different. Uh, they're not going to sell the same thing in a slightly different way. They're going to create something completely new and then push the idea onto the market. They take actions differently. Uh, you and I might do things in a mundane way, in a common day-to-day -day fashion, but a thought leader engages in a different way. They build the enterprise or build society in a different construct and then uh, do the activities that are needed in that society in a different way. So adding new flavor, adding new color, adding new schema, adding new business processes are absolutely vital to the success of a good thought leader. And also as a good thought leader, you turn yourself as a good leader in society in business as well. So thought leaders create opportunities, absolutely. They build sensible traction among the community. You have to build a level of commitment within your society, within the people with whom you work with. So if you, know, you can't be sitting in the sky with your ideas alone. Your ideas are only valued when it's 
it's uh, gathered and grasped by others. So you you have to build your traction. You they introduce new scheme, perspectives, and scope. We have already talked about. They promote opportunities in an academic field as well. Sometimes thought leaders create new knowledge, and that itself turns into a new academic field. For example, um, industrial learning, uh, industrial economy. These are new terms which had been coined in the last 50 years or so. So the 50 to 70 years, and these terms have gained momentum over the last 50, 70, 100 years. Previously, there were no terms and no scholarship in these fields. So a lot of new knowledge and new fields have come about. Um, mechatronics is a new field which has gained momentum in the last 50, 60 years. Ro robotics is a new field which has come about in the last 100 years or so. So new knowledge, new thought leadership, new scholarship have created new opportunities for academic field in thought leadership. So that's important. Any good thought leader to actually do well will need information, will need scholarship knowledge, will need data, will need analysis. And these are done from an academic point of view. And thought leaders are sometimes very academic into creating the new knowledge for society. They drive new knowledge, they influence others to take action, which we had talked about, uh, being the perspective where they, they stop at a certain gateway and let others come in and do the implementation of the knowledge that has been acquired or given by a thought leader. They help design new organizational framework, very important. A thought leader is always challenging the status quo and they want to create the new enterprise. They, they help to create the new organizational framework. So thought leaders have a lot of things to do and thought leaders are adding to your national economy, national GDP. So very important uh, role that they play. So moving forward, I am coming to the last slide and I end with a million dollar question. So today's million dollar question is, do thought leaders truly influence the core of our thinking or is it mostly a term that withers away in time? This depends. Uh, certain thought leaders are so influential that they change the core of our ideas. Uh, Bill Gates is an extremely important thought leader in the ICT field. Uh, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, there are so many people, Zuckerberg, they're changing and transforming the engagement in, in which we deal with society and deal with our day-to-day -day affairs. So these are truly influential champion thought leaders, but there are people who are making a small scratch in society and then those scratches wither away those are those are sometimes needed but they are not adding value to a larger extent in society uh, that does not say that uh, how we should not leave the small in the small marks in society we have to make small marks in society as well even if that withers away like a fad, a, a, something new that came about, stayed for a little while, but it didn't have a meaningful impact in society, and then it withered away. Sometimes that's true, but we don't know which idea, which construct, which philosophy will be enduring. So as, if, as someone who's championing with new ideas, tinkering with new constructs, new business processes, new products, and new services, we should not push ourselves to, to that thinking that uh, let's not do this because I don't know the outcome that it will bring about. A leader does not think in those terms. Leader assesses the ground reality, uh, realizes that what level of commitment he or she has to put in, and then goes in that direction and slaves and comes with the output that he or she uh, wants to see in the society, in his or her business. So you have to have that championing spirit. You have to have that spirit as a leader, as a thought leader, that what I'm doing, I want to make a meaningful transformation in society. So you need to push yourself to the limit. You can't be stopping, putting a break and thinking that is it adding value or not? 
sometimes you need to do that sometimes you have to be rational but oftentimes you have to be intuitive and be passionate in the direction in which you're moving and these passionate people are the people who actually create and co-create a wonderful universe and not do not let others dissuade you if you are pushing yourself in a particular journey and if you are absolutely convinced then by all means push yourself to that limit and you might be one of those truly influential thought leaders in society in business so i would like to end by saying that you have to be rational you have to have common sense you don't want to go against the grain all the time sometimes you have to go against the grain at the, uh, as well at times so you have to be able to understand which basket of opportunities which are your priorities which set of attributes that you need to tinker with and what is your ultimate outcome that you wish to achieve whether it's doable by you that sometimes you have to ask uh, because certain things are not doable by me and i need to know that i can't be albert einstein tomorrow even if i try at the age of 50, 50 52 this is not possible so possible not possible should not be a word in your dictionary but sometimes you also have to realize that certain things may not be possible but in the true sense of a true leader a true leader who is championing thought leadership understanding for society you have to go with the spirit of i am possible yes it's possible so positive energy is always needed positive mindset is always needed and in our, in order to give you a one liner answer it all depends as to what process you're following and what type of engagement you are involved in if it's truly a groundbreaking perspective then you might be creating something unique for society so you need to walk that road you need to go to the end of that tunnel and see whether you have delivered on the promise that you had uh, you had talked about earlier so with that i would like to end my session and i would like to go back to edward probimondo edward back to you all right um... All right. Thank you very much uh, for your wonderful presentations uh, for thought leadership. So we're very happy that we have concluded our 33rd uh, episode. And we, we will be um, having our next session in the coming week. So we are really welcoming all the, uh, all the audience or all the participants, those who are watching us. So please observe our next session. And I would like to thank again, uh, Advocate Jia Raman for your wonderful presentation. Our time is uh, every Wednesday. We are um, running this program uh, from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, uh, Mountain Standard Time at 9 p.m. and Toronto, Ottawa, Eastern Standard Time at 11 p.m. And in Bangladesh Standard Time is uh, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and Indian Standard Time and uh, Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. With that, thank you very much and stay safe and uh, Stay well. Thank you.